Good evening, residents, residents here, residents at home. I have some announcements to make on behalf of our Parks and Rec Department. Uh, Rubber Ducky Regatta is going to be on Sunday at Kemper Park. Uh, Citadel on Street Road is sponsoring us, and so it's a really fun event. Bring a lunch, bring the kids, grandkids. It's, it's a really nice time. You put the duckies in the water, and you win cash if they come in first, second, or third place. Volunteers are needed for Warminster Day. Uh, that'll be um forget I think it's in June or June 8th. Yeah. June 8th. June 8th for Warminster Day. Uh, for details to volunteer, 215-443-5428 to sign up. Or you can go on the website, www.warminsterdays.org. Uh, it is on <coughs> June 8th from 11 to 4. Uh, the Cowley Family ShopRite is going to be helping sponsor it. Uh, there will be music, family entertainment, activities, pizza challenge, inflatables, businesses, marketplace, tons and tons of fun. May is bike month. Get a bike safety check. Join Parks and Rec and the Warminster Police Department for a bike safety check on Saturday, May 25th <coughs> from 9 a.m. to noon at Warminster Community Park. Bikes will be checked for proper function, rider fit, and helmet safety. Meet by the basketball courts. Reminder, bike and hike safety trail, slower moving traffic always has the right of way. Upcoming workshops and classes, American Red Cross babysitting class, protect yourself from scams, know your Medicare options, and walk with a naturalist. Discount tickets, we have discount movie tickets sold year round, $9.50 each. Discount summer tickets for amusement parks, local attractions have arrived. Friends of Warminster Park have the hometown hero banners available. Friends of Warminster Park invite all residents to participate in the Hometown Hero Banner Program along with Veterans Way in Warminster Community Park. For information on any of these events, just visit www.warminstertownship.org. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that Mr. McKee, Mr. McPhillips, and myself were um, at, attended the scholarship luncheon with the uh, Chamber of Commerce this afternoon. Very worthy applicants that received the scholarships. I was honored to be able to give the Woman to Women Scholarship, which started a couple years ago. Uh, these, these, these applicants are amazing. They've got children, they're, they're 4.0 averages, they're like number one in their class. It's like they really deserve uh, the scholarship program, so I was honored to do that. That's it, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mrs. Fresco. Mr. McKee. And just on that, that was a tremendous lunch, and I'm sure Mr. McPhillips is going to comment as well to, to, um, to have these applicants. And we do it every year. And I always announce when we're doing it, you know, sometimes as supervisors, we take a beating, and especially now that the invention is social media. But the best part of the job that we have was today, just to go there and present these scholarships and see there, there's a very, very bright future for our country with, with kids like this are just amazing, amazing to see, to see what all the clubs they belong to in school and National Honor Society and where they're going to college and they're focused on what they want to do and just, just terrific. And I want to thank the chamber that, you know, they fundraise all year long to be able to give out these scholarships. So it's really a great luncheon. So I, I have a, a couple of other announcements, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I want to start off by offering my condolences. Uh, our friends over in Upper Southampton lost, lost one of their great citizens two weeks ago, Jack McDermott, who, who was lovingly known as Fat Jack. Everybody in Southampton, Warminster knows Jack. Jack was a uh, constable, worked out of Judge Finello's court often, and uh, he was a terrific guy who died suddenly on us, and he, he'll be sorely missed. Jack was a terrific guy, so my condolences to the McDermott family. I also want to talk about one of our uh, uh, deceased um, members of our community. Two weeks ago, I had the pleasure of going over to William Tennant High School where they dedicated the planetarium to Betty Huff. Betty was a longtime school director and a long, long time uh, Warminster citizen, and she was instrumental in getting that planetarium moved from McDonald Elementary over to the high school and it was the first time I was in there and it's it's fabulous it, it's no it's no different than the Franklin Institute it's a, it's a fabulous planetarium so they put a nice plaque outside dedicating it to Betty her whole family was here from down in Florida and down south her, her daughter her niece everyone was there it was a it was a really nice day and I want to thank Jane Lynch too because Jane really was instrumental in getting that done for her friend Betty so it was a really good day so well done and, and Betty will be sorely missed as well the only other uh, announcement I had is I had the pleasure of going over with Mr. Schuster a couple weeks ago to the new home to suites over next to Costco. Mr. Steins in the audience tonight's one of his clients, Panak Patel, is the uh, proprietor there. Gave us a really nice tour of the facility. It's a, it's a beautiful facility. I mean, top to bottom, just beautiful. And I want to thank him for bringing that to Warminster. So we have two top flight hotels right next to each other there. 
that, that if people for their corporate needs or personal needs in Warminster, but really nice. And I want to thank Mr. Patel for have, having us. He, he had a grand opening that I was unable to attend, so I rescheduled and was able to go over with Mr. Schuster and take a walk through and see the place. But really well done. Beautiful job. And that, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McKee. Mr. McPhillips. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a quick update. You re may remember that last month was the latest National Prescription Drug Take Back Day, and I'm happy to report that Bucks County still leads the state of Pennsylvania in terms of the amount of pounds of drugs we've been taking back. And I believe that's in large part because of townships like Warminster, because when you consider since 2012, Warminster has taken back close to 10,000 pounds of prescription medication. So that's 10,000 pounds that aren't going to be abused, that aren't going to end up in the wrong hands. And so every day can be a take back day. You should know that. You can go to the police station, the top of the steps is the green box. You can drop off your unwanted, unused prescription medications. Uh, the other thing I want to say is that on May 30th, I'll be meeting with township residents at Shepherd's Crossing. It'll be in the clubhouse at Shepherd's Crossing, which is located on 120 Shepherd's Way, and that won't be until May 30th at 7 p.m. And um, I do want to touch on the, uh, the chamber event today. Um, I had the opportunity to be part of the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce Scholarship Committee, and we reviewed tons of resumes from students from Archbishop Wood, William Tennant, and, and the technical school. And, and, and I got to tell you, it's amazing what these students do inside the classroom and outside the classroom. And it kind of makes you think that my days back at Archbishop Wood don't even compare to what these students were doing. And it kind of makes you wonder if you can give a, have a do-over and go back to high school. But more you think about it, Father Gleason probably wouldn't like that idea. So um, I really want to congratulate these kids with everything that they're doing and what they're going to do. And uh, that's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Rick Phillips. All right, uh, my only uh, supervisor's comment tonight is in terms of new businesses, Steak and Shake is open. <laughs> it is open. They decided to test their fire alarm immediately upon opening again, but everything was okay. So I encourage you to, uh, to uh, go over and visit them along with all the other uh, wonderful businesses that call Warminster home. Please, uh, we have a lot of options in dining now. Please make sure to visit all of them. They're, they're trying their best and uh, uh, we want to see them succeed and we want to keep small businesses going here in Warminster. So uh, please uh, make sure and uh, uh, stay local when you're looking to dine. Uh, with that, let's move on to our presentation. And first up uh, is going to be uh, the Memorial Day Parade. I'm going to ask uh, Mr. John Gruber to come to the podium. Uh, we have a, he's not here. He's not here. Oh. I'm going to back to Alex Devia. Did I pronounce it right? Yeah. And is this working? Okay. So Alex, if you just come up to the podium a second, just if you want to uh, really quick, uh, just talk about this year's Memorial Day Parade, especially who's in it. What's the big draw this year? We have a lot of new participants. Um, main one is everybody probably saw the camel on, on 309. He's going to be there. Uh, new uh, bands and a lot of other per participants. John has the list. I didn't, I, I didn't yeah, bring it. But sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> I think whatever. the Philly Fanatic. I think that's. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, yes, yeah, so the Philly Fanatic will be, will be in the parade. And us. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and your, your, fa your favorite, your favorite supervisor. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but it should, have, it should be a good time. We have a lot more participants than we did last year. So please come on out. Uh, and participate after the parade. It's going to end up at, at the uh, VFW post. We have food, we have entertainment. One of the uh, string bands is going to come into the hall and play in the hall. And there's another uh, band that's going to be playing in, in the hall also. So come on out and enjoy yourself. Right. And, and so that the public knows that. The day doesn't start with the parade. There's actually a ceremony that takes place here at the Township Building. Is that correct? Yes. 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 So that'll start well, my, my day starts at <laughs> about 6 in the morning going through all the cemeteries. Yes, True. Mr. Chairman, I'm okay. sorry to interrupt, but I was informed today by Eric Fleischer that the Honor Guard will also be at the burial ground off of Newtown Road at 7.30 a.m. Yes. On Memorial Day. The, yes. Uh, the commander, I know you'll be there. To, yep. We went last year. was the first year you did that, and I really – recommend stopping by to see in this burial ground it's, it's really exceptional yeah. so thank you for coming out to do that as well and that's for the public anyone that wants to come anybody out who wants to come out uh it's uh right behind fox run apartments if you uh 
pull into the driveway of Fox Run. It's all the way around to the back. Well, we appreciate everything the VFW does for our veterans and for our community. And on behalf of the uh, Board of Supervisors and uh, Warminster Township, we'd like to present this check of, for $7,500 to the VFW for the parades. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Moving on now to land use matters, public hearings, and ordinances. First up tonight, we will have a sketch plan from the Franklin Corporate Center. I'd like to invite their representatives to the podium now to present. Good evening, supervisors, staff, residents. My name is Neil Stein, representing Franklin Realty. With me is the president of the company, Peter Gebert. Good evening. This is a concept plan there's no application pending so we're interested in whatever feedback you may be able to give us um, however this is an unusual proposal because unlike most proposals where there's consideration for zoning relief the impacts from this proposal are far less than what has already been approved and I think the simplest way uh, to deal with this proposal is to simply go through the package of exhibits uh, that hopefully you all have. Uh, page number one uh, is simply an aerial photograph uh, giving you a sense of where the project would be located. Uh, so you get an idea <coughs> of where it is in Franklin Corporate Center. Page number two is uh, the approved plan, which is the same exhibit in large size over here. And if you see the area outlined in green, that's lot number three of the overall corporate center. And what was approved for lot number three was a total of 13 buildings. Nine of those buildings have been constructed and four have not been constructed. And of the nine that have been constructed, at least one is completely vacant and another one is 75% vacant. And uh, Mr. Gebert can certainly elaborate on the challenges that he's faced in terms of attracting uh, office tenants to this property. So that is uh, the plan as approved by the township. And page number three is really just a magnified version of what was approved as a part of lot number three. And the buildings um, that are not constructed are buildings one through four, five through 13 are the ones that have been constructed. Now, page number four, again, shows the four buildings that have not been constructed and how large they would be uh, if they were constructed, uh, approximately almost 40,000 square feet and uh, with a total of 301 parking spaces. The next page uh, depicts the proposal that Franklin would like to implement, which is senior condominium housing. Uh, so the office buildings would not be built, and in their place, you see five buildings each building to have 12 for sale uh, condominium units. So one thing that that does immediately is, or several things it does immediately is it decreases building coverage, it decreases impervious coverage, it takes the parking down from 301 spaces to 177 spaces, reduces the uh, coverage from almost 40,000 square feet to just over 30,000 square feet. The other nice thing is with this type of housing, traffic will certainly be less than with the offices. Uh, the infrastructure already exists, roads, stormwater management, and uh, as a result, there's no impact whatsoever merely reductions in the impact from the approved office plan. 
The other nice thing is there are no surrounding or adjacent residential areas that would be impacted by this proposal. So it's a very compatible use with the other uses in the corporate center, but creates absolutely no impact uh, for anyone else in the community. And Mr. Gebert can certainly tell you that with respect to another project he's developing uh, identical to this or substantially identical, the demand is very significant for this type of housing. The next page uh, is merely an overlay plan that shows how the senior housing buildings would fit uh, or would be located relative to the footprints of the approved office buildings. So the dashed lines are where the office buildings would be located if constructed. And you see the uh, senior housing buildings located therein. The last two pages are architectural elevations of a project, of that project that Franklin is developing uh, in Brookhaven Borough so that you get a sense of the type of architecture and the type of design uh, that's being proposed here. But obviously it, it would be a residential uh, character compared to the office buildings and uh, we think certainly a compatible use for this area and for the corporate center. You know, we've examined a lot of the other permitted uses in the IO district and there are a lot of them. But when you go through that list, you realize that either because of property size or because of other uses that already exist um, or because of uses uh, that simply would not be compatible with existing uses, you really don't have a whole lot of alternatives if you're not going to do uh, traditional office here. So we think this represents a very uh, non-impact type of compatible use for this particular area. And I certainly wouldn't want to put words in Peter's mouth, although I've been doing it for 30 years. Um, but I think he can explain better than anybody the challenges he's faced in terms of finishing out this development. Good evening. Uh, appreciate your time. Um, we purchased the Franklin Corporate Center from Erickson back in 2002 or 2003. It's been almost 16 years ago. Uh, I won't say I had brown hair, but it wasn't as gray. And um, we our, what we envisioned and I think what we've tried to do and execute was to bring Class A office product into um, Warminster, which was a very mature market. It, it was, I like to uh, call it like an oasis that was sort of protected from development by the actual Naval Air Technology Center. So we wanted to really create something special along with Ericsson. We went down to Baltimore, met with Erickson. They, we showed them our product. Um, and a lot of brokers said, you're not gonna be able to lease class A product in Warminster because it's all over stuff. And I said, the only reason class A stuff hadn't been built is because there was nowhere to build it. Long story short is we went and we built, I think 700, 600,000 square feet of product we've brought in some really good tenancy um, the main objective of the Keystone Opportunity Zone when that was created was to backfill the loss of 2400 jobs when the naval base abruptly closed down since then we have recreated more than 2400 jobs we're now sort of at an impasse where absorption has basically we've we've reached a balance or an equilibrium and absorption of what 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 we've built um as a matter of fact two years ago panak came to me his group bought the holiday insight from us and panak came and i had actually i had built an off a little office building where we have oven brothers sandwich shop right now I had a slab for a sister building right next door and we had a pad site right next to that sat there for 10 years and Panak said would you consider selling us 
that property and when we looked at it um, it actually from a, a land planning standpoint worked very well and it added another really quality hotel I think as uh, Mr. Coley just said uh, to the township so I think uh, that turned out to be an asset when I look at lots one through four it's been 10 years I'm still struggling to attain 80 percent vacancy and when I look at the permitted uses I mean everybody from I mean we've all sort of worked um, in conjunction as the township as Erickson to try to create rateables and quality assets and compatible uses within a township but we've hit equilibrium and when I look at as a matter of fact when this was rezoned it was rezoned specifically to create uh, additional uses that would be permitted to speed up or um, you know accelerate the development of the remaining parcels and one of the results of that was um, the acquisition of Costco that you know Neil and I attracted to the site and I think that's been a benefit to the township as well um, but when I look at the existing permitted uses right now the only thing first of all it allows marijuana production and growing I can't even grow weeds so um, I had to rule that out immediately the only thing that really would make sense would be a high bay distribution warehouse and I don't feel that is compatible with what's surrounding it we have class A office we have vertical screen which is a Leeds you know platinum building and we have Erickson retirement community and although warehouse is a permitted use and probably would be successful there I don't think it's compatible with with everything the other thing is you have Ann's Choice which offers an alternative for the CCIC uh, people the empty nesters that want to downsize the problem with that is they buy their units and then because it's so highly amenitized they're paying between two thousand and three thousand dollars a month in fees our units are all one floor 1200 feet elevator served two bedroom two bath with den granite countertops and at an entry level in the low 200s so it allows people that may not want or may not be able to afford the Ann's Choice alternative or maybe not need the um, the ongoing care to come in by own a building in fee simple the common area maintenance charges would be relatively low comparatively because we don't have swimming pools we're gonna have a beautiful courtyard with fountains um, grilling areas but we don't have you know the thousand dollar two thousand three thousand dollars a month it's going to be a very entry level economical type of a product that'll generate tax rateables without taxing the school district and as Neil pointed out there's nothing around us that I I, I could imagine would find the concept objectionable so in in summary we're looking to create a use that would benefit the community allow people a reasonable low priced alternative for empty nesters create rateables for the township and accelerate the development of the last remaining piece um, in, in 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 the park all right well thank you thank you sir uh let's uh in terms of the board uh, anybody have questions comments I mean really I think uh, that the uh, developers are kind of looking for maybe to see what our initial my feelings are I go mean, for it my, my one question is is that how would you I mean because this is kind of I mean I'm sure you'll be able to spit out a whole bunch of examples but it, it seems to me because I got the satellite up and I'm looking at it it seems to me that there would be I don't know you, you're gonna you're gonna pull into the development you're gonna have 55 and older you know residential on one side and existing office 
structures to the other side with nothing really separating them. I mean, your neighbor, you're going to walk out the door and you're going to, you're going to see all the office workers coming in and, and whatnot. I don't know what's there right now. Well, Building 7, um, Peter, you want to take this microphone? Peter, I don't think the baby's crazy about the plan. <laughs> I'm used to it. My brother, my brother has 15 grandkids. Um, the nice thing about this plan is that the only thing that's close to the 55 and older development is Building 7, which is one elevation, and then Building 5, which is the, the skinny end of, of this other elevation. So we're planning, um, we're planning dense landscaping. We're developing a big courtyard in the middle here, which would be, have the uh, appropriate buffers along with fountains and grilling areas. So we, what we've done with the land planning is we've minimized the exposure, the residential exposure to, um, to the actual office. Um, there's there's minimal exposure um and every, I, I didn't mention that every unit will either have a patio or a balcony um not large balconies are about 40 square 45 square feet but it's adequate to have a nice coffee table little breakfast table and two chairs but we we took that into effect when we were planning the um the buildings peter how many units total anyway there'd be 60 they're there's there's four units per floor three floors and they're all identical um the nice thing about the design is they're a very short walk from the parking area into the elevator served core area so they've been designed um they're all handicapped accessible master bathrooms um wheelchair accessible so they've been designed where people can move in and stay in them for a long time so as a buffer will you be playing like trees around around the development landscape yeah landscape right. we can do we can do berming and you know we haven't really developed the landscaping yet mm -hmm. but from a sales standpoint you know i concur with mr monroe it's it's going to behoove us right. to have a nice buffer between right. the two because that would attract folks to one yeah we want to we want to differentiate the residential so that the the people that are pulling into their residence don't feel like they're in an office park right right, right. thank you uh, uh what, what type of um who's in the if you can give some examples i mean just the couple of buildings that would abut this who's in there now uh, vertical kind of vertical screen right. is in building number 10 which is or excuse me building number five and this is Delta Community Supports. Okay. Um, Delta is very lightly used. It's a um, it's like a charitable organization. They own their building. We own the vertical screen buildings. Vertical screen is all telemarketing. Um, okay. So it's not. So there's no. I mean, uh, there's no like industrial waste. Or no, 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 no. Out of there. Okay. No. Very nice development so far. Well, thank you. Able to do. Okay. you know, we, Costco's thriving and the hotel is it's beautiful. You know, it's, it's really nice. Well, the Patels are first class people. I mean, I, I love dealing with them because what you see is what you get. And we, we've tried to keep it as we envisioned like an oasis, you know, in the middle. Do you think it would just be a better idea rather than try to do the office? the office buildings to, to have a development well there's no demand for the right. i have existing buildings up that are sitting there for years yeah when panak came to me that slab had been there for eight or nine years and he said do you, I, I think we could do a motel there or a hotel and i said i think it'd be great um and it's it's been very successful already so it's i i think what we're trying to do is find the right fit for that last piece of of, of ground but it's not going to be office um, and there does look like the the one property uh, looks like just to the south 
uh, southwest of, of the proposed development. Uh, it looks like there's some uh, loading zones. It looked like there's loading zones for tractor trailers. Is that um, here? Yeah. Yep. I think, that, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, we designed this building for Bostic adhesives. Uh, that has since been, um, since been sold. But what we did is we designed it as a U-shape to basically shield the loading from the contiguous um, parcels. Okay. They do not get a lot of tractor trailer use either. It's okay. minimal. I could just see the parking outlines for them. So yeah, on the satellite view, there's definitely a need in the town to, for affordable retirement <coughs> communities for well, 55 plus. There's def definitely a need for it, and I'm in that development a lot because I go to Costco, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I never see those tractor trailers in that no. building at all. The, the problem is the majority of the age-restricted development now is fee-based. So unless you want to pay $300,000 and can afford $40,000 a year, you, you can't get in. And this is a, an attractive alternative. The people in Brookhaven, Brookhaven's um, mean income is about $57,000 a year. Mm -hmm. But we have had a tremendous amount of feedback. People want to stay close to their place of worship. They want to. They want to still shop in their supermarket, and they don't want to leave. It's a very parochial. It's a blue call, blue collar town, and this is a low cost alternative that they can sell their house and move in. Thank you. Um, I, I have I have some concerns. I have concerns about density. I have concerns about putting residential and with light industrial i i just do i mean i i got a little feedback from the staff today from the staff meeting i mean i i'd be glad to hear mr kennard's input because i i spoke to the planner today as well who has some concerns well we're actually decreasing density here right. so if we built if we built the office we'd have an extra uh ten thousand feet of building coverage right we'd have another hundred cars of traffic we're not in light industrial. We're in cl Class A office condominium space. Right. So, it, it it's done all the time. Upper Dublin just rezoned a large portion of Fort Washington Industrial Park to introduce um, residential into the park because the park is dying. Right. Um, so, if if you go out to King of Prussia, if you to the town center in King of Prussia. You've got, you've got age-restricted housing on top of retail next to office. Right. So it's a very compatible, it's not, I can, I absolutely concur if I wanted to build this next to the morgue or next to uh, what's right. across the street, I wouldn't do it because right. I, I couldn't sell it. Right. But I mean, we're willing and we're convinced enough that this is an appropriate product to put our money where our mouth is and build it. And, that, and that's one thing I don't want you to spend a lot of money if the board's not comfortable. And sure. that's why you're here tonight. That's why we're having the discussion Correct. we're having. But I would like to hear from the staff. I think we should back up a little bit, and maybe this is better for Neil, but what are you asking? You, you talked a little bit at staff meeting, but I think Neil needs to maybe indicate what use is proposed and, and what's, we recommend one, you know, there's different paths to take. and what. What are you asking for the board to do? Well, uh, with regard first to this of all, it's not a matter. permitted use uh, in the IO district. Um, so as a consequence, it's it either turns out to be a use variance from the zoning hearing board, uh, or preferably, and I'm speaking as a developer's lawyer, a text amendment to the zoning code to make it a conditional use. So in essence, it's permitted but as your solicitor will tell you, you have a great deal of control in the conditional use process, depending on how you write the text amendment. And, and the use you're proposing is multifamily residential. Age restricted. Multi Age restricted. Okay. It should be noted the Holiday Inn. Back Peter, in. can you come so close to Mike, here? Uh, we can't hear you at home. <laughs> it should be noted that um, the Holiday Inn, when we first uh, got that approved was a conditional use yeah, I remember and um, which was not permitted by right mm -hmm. and we came in and I think everybody thought it was a good idea and I think it turned out to be a, a great idea mm -hmm. but um, 
since then we have a sandwich shop we have a bank we have a daycare center i know that the bank does a heck of a business with ann's choice you know it's very convenient for the residents just to pull in but um you know i think this is introducing a clean use as i said i mean we're decreasing density we're decreasing traffic we're decreasing building coverage i could build a warehouse tomorrow and it would lease because amazon and everybody else is looking for warehouse space i don't think it's the right product if the township thinks differently then i peter let me jump let me jump in because that's where i was going to go i think this isn't the right forum to go any further i think we we need to decide where you're going to go if you're going to go anywhere and i recommend going the planning commission and maybe economic redevelopment can look at it as well but i think it's perfect for an open dialogue because i've been with you for 11 years going through this i'm sympathetic to where you're at you know i've walked that we help close that out you have to come back in post escrow to finish it um it hasn't happened in years uh, you built the infrastructure you know you put costs out there that you're not you know it's just sitting there um However, there's a lot of zoning issues. I mean, I'm not going to disagree with anything you or Neil said about density, about, you know, parking. It, it's whether it's compatible with that area. And I think it's more of a planning, economic redevelopment. Maybe they can look at the text amendment, look at different uses. You can sit down. I'm not saying it might not be this final product, but I, I think it's not the right form. I think the only thing you should do is get a nine in the heads to f investigate it further. Staff had issues. I know the planners against it. It's, I'll make the engineering work because I've already worked with you and it's going to mm -hmm. work. Uh, it's just whether or not there's compatibility later on when residents are there with trucks, with, with the type of uses. We've worked with the Costco vertical screen. I've been through the hotel. So I've been with you and all that. And they all worked out really well, but they didn't start out and were done and approved. The Costco took a long time to get through. And I think you need to go to a different forum and see what they had to say and then come back. I mean, can we start with the Economic Development Committee? I mean, we have business owners on there that have done business in the township to kind of have a feel for what we're looking for, what the township's looking for in the planning commission. We want to I mean, be, I don't, I don't, I don't want you to spend a ton of money either. I mean, I, I'm sympathetic to that. I really am, but I would like to hear some input other than us just sitting up here right now. And That's, steam ahead. For the past, That's just my opinion. For the past 15 years, we want to be good neighbors. Okay. And you have been. Well, thank yeah. you. I, I and do. that's, that's why we're here. Uh -huh. um, if you say this, this isn't going to work we'll find something that will right. and that's by no means a threat no no but i i can't sit there and mow that for 10 more years right i mean i gotta start planting corn or something you know? <laughs> I, I think i think if we move this to edc we could that could be on there relatively quickly based on your schedules uh we could start getting feedback go ahead yeah. Mr. Monroe, no i mean i mean i i'm glad that you said the edc because i mean my what i was going to say is is i think this is more of a macro issue what i mean by macro issue is is sure. that you've got a very large industrial complex we had uh we spent a tremendous amount of money just recently uh maybe not tremendous but we spent money on doing a comprehensive plan we had a comprehensive plan board and if we're going to start and that's what this would be if we're going to start tweaking uh, our industrial complex uh it needs to be done in a coordinated way and i think we as a board would need to really have to talk about that or it come from an edc or you know um the comprehensive plan board I, if they I still th exist i think it's a value that you know that we each take what we've heard tonight talk to mr kenner talk to mr schuster and what feedback that we do have for peter and neil get it to them so they can incorporate that into whatever we see next mm -hmm. at the edc or or whatever venue, Mr. McPhillips, I, did you have? We keep mentioning the EDC, and Mr. Sun, I don't know what your timetable is, but they don't meet again until September. So we that, can, that might be problematic. We can schedule a meeting. We can schedule a meeting, can schedule a meeting. Yeah. sure. I don't want you to wait We'll bring, we'll bring a meeting great. up sooner if you're available soon. That, yeah. we'll, we will be, we'll, to, make we'll make ourselves available. I'm, I'm with Mr. Monroe. I'm not in absolute no way on this, but I just want some more input and some more feedback. I'm well, not, look, we'd love it. That's why we're here. thumbs up and say, hey, go start spending thousands of dollars. No. And then you come back four months from now and we vote no. For, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't example, want that yeah. to happen. For example, for my, my feedback on it is I like, I like the creativity behind it. I, I do agree that and choice serves a demographic that is unattainable for most americans and definitely most southeastern eastern pennsylvanians however uh my my concerns are uh, honestly i and i don't know if mr kennedy's person asked this um we throw 60 units in there uh even though it's age restricted there's still going to be drivers are we going to need to put a light in on that road where 
because it's going to be dumping out right in front of Ann's Choice, where Ann's Choice comes out. Which is already a dangerous yeah, intersection. We, we had a traffic agreement okay. way back in the day, and we basically had committed with Ann's Choice mm -hmm. that if there were warrants by a certain a date certain, right. that a light would go in, okay. and there was never warrants that, right. that required it. Right. And that would be part of it. If they move forward, that would be something. Yeah, that would be some. I mean, these are these are the things I'm thinking about. Also, I think Mr. Monroe brought up an excellent point about the the focus of the comprehensive plan, and Ms. Mrs. Fresco can talk about this too, it was sort of how how we how we evolve from our, our you know, our sort of military military industrial background into this more service oriented and more multi generational housing options that, that we need in this town. So uh, I think there's value in discussing it and getting people in there. Uh, for my part, my primary concerns are around traffic and if that fits into the comp plan. And because even if we go through this, we'd be have to go through three levels of, of approvals where you'd have the planning commission probably need significant zoning relief and then the final with the board so uh, because you guys have been such great uh, community members I want to make sure that we're handling this the right way that we're not we're not, yeah, we don't want you to to waste time or money but at the same time if there's a path forward I think the right way is to is 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 the way we're talking about right now Appreciate very well that. said yeah. Mr. Crawley very well said thank you is there any other specific feedback for the uh just how you would combine industrial with residential that's that's the only and so i, I think they're they're gonna go to I, the right venues and i think that's great well i don't think it. i don't think we have any industrial proper in the park right but it's office it's more office right more office. and i i it, it's funny we're gonna we're, you know there's a lot of cut like there's pro Logis out there which is a big warehouse national warehouse company we're going to have by the end of this year 2.6 billion with a b square foot shortage of warehouse space mm -hmm. <clears throat> um i do a lot of work in the lehigh valley they're they're building eight and nine hundred thousand square foot warehouses yep. 36 That's foot in. clear mm -hmm. spec and they're getting to amazon just at the lansdale interchange just took two hundred thousand feet mm -hmm. so what i think's happening is because of e-commerce and because of the aging demographic because of people that are working at home so you might might have a reduction in office um, uh, demand mm -hmm. you have an increase in warehouse demand you have an increase in where in age restricted need that's affordable because there's a lot out there that's not affordable and um, so what we're trying to do is shoehorn ourselves into an area that works for the township, works for the residents, and works for us. Right. And, if, and if we can get there, I'm, I'm confident yes. you'll have the support of the board right. if we can get right. it filtered out. Let me, let me ask sort of a blue sky question, which was if, if forget what it's currently zoned, is there any use that you would imagine that would really work there? beyond like warehouse or this if it was if it was zoned differently you could do age restricted apartments yeah the, i don't know if you've heard of the westrom company but westrom i've heard the name i'm not familiar westrom personally. is building a lot of age restricted apartments mm -hmm. um toll bruce toll bet yeah. investments on welsh road mm -hmm. in um the old prudential piece yeah. of ground yeah. he's building the promenade that's Mm -hmm. going to be massive I was by massive. a couple of weeks ago Oof. yeah but there is a good example you've got age restricted residential right, right next to Prudential right right, right mm -hmm. next to all the office um, now he's enhancing that with a retail component right but a lot of people don't want the retail component mm -hmm. because you know you have people in a restaurant till 10 o'clock at night when older people are trying to sleep so right. No, I see what, with the what, Wegmans over in Warrington. Yeah. Yeah. What's going into that retail component mm -hmm. is basically millennials. Yep. Right. So, okay, it's, it's a dynamic. No, I, was, I appreciate the right the now. insight. Yeah. Well, thank well, you. I look forward to the feedback from. Great. Well, we appreciate a larger group. It, and um, I'm sure you. we'll be seeing you again. Thank, thank you for all your time. Thank you. Appreciate thank it. All right, now on to item B, which is consider adoption of Ordinance 756, Motor Vehicle Code Amendment. <coughs> Mr. Schuster. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At your last meeting, I did go over the proposed changes to the Motor Vehicle Code. Again, this is mostly a cleanup uh, as the, uh, the code had gone unchanged for a number of years. Uh, it has been advertised by the Solicitor's Office, and it's uh, available for you to take action this evening. All right. Any, uh, anybody on the board have questions, comments, concerns about the ordinance? Okay. Um, could I get a motion to uh, adopt the so, ordinance? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any uh, further questions, comments from the board? No. Any from the public? Okay. Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Ordinance passes 5 0. Dan voted. Dan voted, yeah. I did. Okay. Yeah. It's very subtle. Dan, Dan is. All right. Now we're going to move on to public comment. Uh, township residents have this opportunity at this time to comment on non-agenda items. Now there is a five-minute guideline, and we have a number of people here tonight, I know, to talk on different items. So uh, just a couple, and, and I think a couple people haven't been here before. So uh, once you're recognized, come on up. Uh, please say your name and your address. That's for the record. Uh, that goes into the minutes. Uh, and they don't have five minutes to speak. Uh, generally, you know, we try to keep around five minutes. You start getting near the five minutes, I'm going to go like, hey, five. And that just means please, you know, uh, wrap it up in the next 45 seconds to a minute. Sometimes we'll, we'll uh, interact in discourse, and obviously we'll see where that goes. But because I know there's more than a, more than a few people who want to comment tonight, I just want to make sure we keep it moving. Uh, the other thing, too, is uh, if somebody, uh, we had this happen a couple meetings ago, if somebody happens to say something you don't agree with, I would appreciate that if uh, you use your opportunity to, to speak at the lectern as, as uh, the time to address that and not to speak over uh, someone from the crowd or at any other time, okay? Um, with that being said, uh, is there anybody who would like to uh, do public comment? And we're going to start with the baby. With the baby. <laughs> I'm sorry you have a name too, but the baby is the star of the show, obviously. So welcome. Thank you. I brought him for leverage. Well, is it, it helping? It's working. <laughs> it's working. Nobody's paying any attention to anything else. So. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Christy Brem, and I live at 92 Iris Road with my husband and um, our three children. And I came tonight to have my voice be heard on the issue of chickens. Okay. We're, we're a chicken-loving family. Um, actually, we got our chickens before the zoning ordinance changed to make it uh, illegal to have them. So. We are actually, as per Gary in zoning, we are grandfathered in. We are considered um, non-complying but legal, I think. Legal non-conformity. Thank you. Okay. That's it. That's who we are. Um, so it's really not for our personal gain so much that I'm here tonight, but there was a post on Facebook earlier today that um, another woman was going to be coming and talking about chickens, and I really wanted to lend momentum to what she's about to say. Um, by discussing a couple of things quickly. Um, mm -hmm. The benefits of having chickens. You guys didn't really think you were going to be talking about chickens when you took these jobs, I bet. But here we are. Chick-fil-A, yeah. Chick-fil-A. <laughs> you know, I almost dressed him up as a cow because we didn't have a chicken costume, and I figured the next best thing that we think of with chickens is yeah. cows, right? <laughs> Eat more chicken. Um, okay, but actually, we love the fresh eggs of our chickens. We enjoy fresh eggs every single day from our chickens. Um, also, it's been a very wholesome family activity. My children know where food comes from. It doesn't just manifest in a grocery store. It comes from an animal, and they have learned about respect and taking care of that animal, those animals, actually, there's four of them, and caring for them. It's been very educational, and I hear a lot of, um, a lot of concerns that people have, and I want to just speak to some of those while I have the opportunity to do so. Um, Number one, I've heard about rats being a problem with chickens. And before we um, took the step to get our chickens, I actually took the measure of interviewing some other people in local areas who had chickens and had them for many years to find out, what are you doing about rats? I don't want to be in trouble with my neighbors for bringing in a rat infestation. And that's when I learned about the grandpa feeder. Just want to put it out there, you're not going to have a rat infestation with a grandpa feeder. It's an expensive feeder. It's about $100, $125 and you train your chickens to use it. Chickens are actually very trainable. We trained all four of ours just over a course of a couple days to use this feeder and 
we've never had a rat problem and we never will because the feeder only opens when they stand on it. Okay, that's really specific and probably way more than you wanted to know. <laughs> Next, um, I've heard people say, well, there shouldn't be chickens because what about a rooster? And I just, you guys already know this, but that's already covered under the noise ordinance. No one's going to be allowed to have a rooster because there's a noise, noise ordinance. Um, the issue of smells, diseases, uncleanliness, um, I just want to speak to that. If you pick your litter every day, just the same way you do with your cat in the litter box, it, you're not going to have a stinky problem. Um, also, I mean, there's no difference in the um, concerns for illnesses from chicken output than there is from cat and dog output. And if you're being clean and hygienic, it's not going to be an issue. Um, with in mind that this other member of our community was going to be speaking tonight um, at about four o'clock this evening, I actually loaded this guy up in my carrier and we quickly run around the neighborhood. I have this document with me. I put together a quick petition of 12 of our neighbors, um, some of them right immediately next to us. And some of the neighbors actually didn't even know that we had chickens because you don't hear them. Mm -hmm. You don't smell them. There's, they were shocked, actually. Um, and I can provide that, uh, that petition if that would be um, helpful. Again, I just did that to try to create some momentum behind this issue, and I hope that the other person who I know came tonight will also speak about it. Well, thank you, Ms. Freeman. Thank, if you, thank, you. thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Thank well, you. I appreciate you coming and, and, and informing us. If you'd like to share the petition, if you can give it to Ms. Zimmerman, she'll, she'll make sure that we all get copies of it. Uh, I'd like to keep uh, any. Uh, I'd like to keep it on the chicken topic for right now. <laughs> Is there anybody else here this evening who would like to speak on the chickens? I guess yeah, come on up. I just, I just, you know, not to put you on the spot, but while we're all here, so. Good evening. My name is Jim Hosgood. I'm, uh, I lived in Warminster for almost three years. Uh, I came from Northeast Philadelphia, and uh, my wife is a Warminster native. <clears throat> So um, I kind of got recruited like a couple hours ago. Because <laughs> lucky you. I, I got approached by Gary Smith probably, I think it was last summer. And when we first moved up here, like we have a pretty big yard. It's a little less than an acre. Um, we thought that we were allowed to have them. And we had the chickens, I think we had eight or nine of them for probably two years <clears throat> until I think, I mean, from what I understand, uh, Warminster doesn't have a problem with it until somebody complains about it. Because I think there's a lot of people with chickens that don't ever, that zoning knows about, but they, uh, they don't ever oh, get any complaints or anything. But yeah, happens. Yeah. Uh, our, ch our neighbors love the chickens. And I just want to reiterate what Christy said. It, um, I think as long as you, you keep, you keep them clean like it's no uh i mean they're as far as the noise goes they're, they're they're it's less than having a dog i mean we have four dogs and the, the dogs are louder than the chickens <clears throat> but i think if you keep it neat i mean it's like it's like anything else with with your yard you got to cut the grass it, it's maintenance if i feel like if they aren't kept well sure it could be a it could be a violation but um I just wanted to reiterate that, but and all, I put together like a little petition early last year or late last year, showing that all of our immediate neighbors like love them, like mm -hmm. they nobody around us had any problems with them, and I actually I don't know, I made like a Facebook post to get a feel about how everyone in the uh, Warminster felt, mm -hmm. and I got like 500 comments mm -hmm. on it, and like I'd say 98 percent of the people like we're in favor of it. Mm -hmm. You get your normal complainers that I'm sure you guys are aware of that kind of just comment on stuff. But for the most part, like everybody was in favor. So I just wanted to reiterate, like I, I live in a big house with a big family. We have seven people and mo I, our uh, younger siblings live with us. And they, I mean, it's like a family thing. Like it's mm -hmm. kind of, um, the kids love it and it's, the neighbors like it too. So I, I just feel like if if people around you don't have, if there's no um, sanitary issues and people around you don't have any concerns, I feel like maybe we could make an exception to the ordinance. 
right. I just wanted to voice my opinion. <clears throat> yeah. You have a question? Yeah. Just to clarify, what does the current ordinance say? Uh, you can or cannot have? You can if you have 10 acres. Okay. Which is impossible. In yeah. Warmester. Warmester. And is there a concern of the chickens running off your property? Um, that, so, we like on Saturday or Sunday, we open the coop up. They're closed. They're closed in all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and they don't want to go anywhere. They just peck around in the yard. Even if, like, one of the kids leave the gates open, they don't, they don't go anywhere. And, and when the sun's about to set, they all go back into the coop anyway. The only, the only, uh, like about, so we we don't have any rat issues either, like because we keep everything neat. And if you keep your food contained, you keep it in a metal container, bungee cord it, um, you, you don't have any issues. But um, the only thing is, like the foxes want to get at them, and like the hawks mm. and stuff. But. Mm -hmm. If you have them That's, in, well, they want to get at cats and dogs too. So. It makes for good videos. Though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any but, other questions? Uh, yeah, I don't I'll, know if, um, if just, anybody wanted to see. Yeah, I just I just want to make. It. I mean, I mean, to me, there are. It's this isn't something that like we have to do a scientific study to figure out. I mean, there are townships that allow them that have ordinances that they do it. Some of them are in our area. I mean, it's not. I don't think it would be very difficult for us to actually look the city into of Philly. Philadelphia is, I believe, changing it as well. Right. Like, if, if you could do it in the city with small, I mean, I came from like small lots. If you could right. do it there and people agree on it there, I think if you have like a sizable yard and the neighbors around you, immediately around you, don't have any issues, I don't see the big concern. But. It's, it, I mean, for our purposes, it would make sense to look at similar style developments townships and things of that nature so yep. i mean i i don't think there's any harm in looking into it right. and mr schuster uh, uh what i had said online earlier today and i think you uh you can confirm this is that currently i mean honestly i i wasn't thinking about chickens until uh i got an email from a resident in, in the last week or so and uh i was like okay let's let's take a look at this so it wasn't something that was on my radar until until recently and i, I consulted with mr schuster and mr schuster informed me that you know we are actually currently undergoing a review of our zoning ordinance we just we're not there yet in terms of making a decision on what that is but now that we've gotten feedback we can we can look into what options exist. Is that correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. I'd be lying to you if I told you we were anticipating spending a lot of time on the chickens, uh, but certainly that's that's not an issue as we go through the process. Um, you know, just to, in general for for those who are uh, you know, watching at home, uh, we are pretty restrictive. Ten acres is, is fairly restrictive. It's very difficult to have ten acres uh, in Warminster. Uh, and yes, there are ways to have. Uh, have chickens and other wildlife uh, that will have very little impact on the neighbors. Uh, there's a flip side to that. There's also people that don't maintain uh, their livestock very well. Um, you, I think comment was made about you know how we don't do anything unless someone complains. It's not that someone complains. It's that we, we we don't have a chicken patrol. You know we don't know who has chickens. We only find out when people actually complain. And that's what we've had at various times is people complaining. One, one thing we're dealing with right now is someone complained about a heavy rat population. Department of Health came out and traced the rat population back to uh, a residence that had chickens. You know, and I don't know if they're doing it properly or not, but um, there, there's pluses and minus. So I think the next step um, is to go ahead through the zoning ordinance review to gather data from other municipalities, similar municipalities uh, that have dealt with this issue see what impact uh, this has had if they've allowed uh, chickens on smaller lots uh, see what kind of uh, impact it has on enforcement uh, and what they've had to do and bring all that information to the board so that you guys can make a, a informed decision on the matter that's going to take a little bit of time as we go through the process but there's certainly a, a spotlight on it right now and I'll, I'll tell you as a grandson of a chicken farmer um, i will uh, i'll definitely give it a, a good good amount of attention yeah i mean it I actually fall under the category of uh, Christy as well. I found that out after a like half hour conversation with Gary. <laughs> so that was really, but just uh, noting it. Now, we appreciate you coming out and, and sharing sharing with us and giving your opinion. I mean, it, like I had said earlier online, is that if, if you didn't come out, if you didn't voice your opinion, uh, only we'd only be hearing one side of the argument. You know what I mean? And it's important. Uh, it, you can have an impact on how this township is governed by 
it's it's you know a lot of it's by who shows up you know and they come and they voice their opinions i know i've been moved by arguments in the past so please continue to voice your opinion not just on this but anything else but i i appreciate everybody who's who's reached out today and i hope you continue to be part of the process as we review this ordinance and, and stay with us on it okay. thank you thank you any other any other all right yes sir my name, is, my name is Mike Ferris. I'm from uh, Cornell Drive, and I had no idea we were going to be talking about chickens tonight. Uh, well, yeah, uh, you missed it, man. I don't know the good folks back here that just spoke, but uh, after hearing this, I just wanted to say uh, my neighbor that's, that's right behind me, mm -hmm. standard quarter-acre lots, I found out about a year after I moved in that he had uh, he had chickens, and the mm -hmm. only reason I found out is because they offered us some eggs. Uh, <laughs> there's no smell. No yeah. dirt. I mean, the dogs are probably dirtier than the chickens. Yeah. I don't know because they had a few dogs, but uh, no rat problems. None of those things that uh, that okay, they were talking there. about. Uh, the great neighbor, uh, great eggs. Cool. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm in support of it though. Just want to kind of throw that out there. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And, and, right. and for the record, too, I mean, you, you can do like pilot programs and stuff like that. It's like you don't, right? Like, you, I mean, even if it's something that we wanted to look at. A and pilot, I don't think so. Since this is a zoning matter, I'm not sure if you can do a pilot program through zoning. Is that, I mean, certainly you could restrict it to different zones, but I don't. Well, I mean, they, you, you could, in, in theory, because you would just not be enforcing it for that limited period of time while you're. It's, it's somewhat of a novel concept. It would, it would certainly have to be defined, and you guys would have to carefully frame out what, what you could do and for how long. But and you'd well, have I mean, to jump dedicate in. enforcement and right. things yeah. like that. It would have I to mean, be. I mean, it's jumping the gun a little but, bit. But, yeah. I, but I think what you said earlier oh, was spot on, that there are other municipalities that have done this. And you know, just let's see if we can get information from those municipalities first, you know, rather than. Uh, just go a little north, all right? It's all written and <laughs> argued. Right. Just make sure about horses and stables, too. Right. All right, and how many acres. It's. Yeah, I would recommend you just, there's plenty of municipalities that we spend a lot more time right. listening about chickens and livestock. All right. Any more chicken comments? Come on now. <laughs> Don't be chicken. My name's Karen oh. Young. I'm the one who started this adventure yeah. a, couple, a week ago. Um, I am vying for the chicken thing. The fresh eggs is a good thing. Um, I understand people's concern about the care of the animals, but you're going to find no matter what kind of animal people have, there's always going to be somebody who's not going to take care of their animals. You see it on TV and the news all the time. People are hoarding animals, not taking care of them, sticking the dead ones in their freezers. There's feces all over their houses. It happens in any community. That just happened in Doylestown a, a week or so ago. So you're going to find that with absolutely anima, any animal, not just chickens. It's going to be the livestock. It's going to be the dogs and the cats. So if people are just, they do their due diligence and they're respectful of everything, the animals, their neighbors, I don't think that it should be a problem. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that had the rat problem. I was trying to figure out a way around it, mm -hmm. meaning I was trying to find a safe way to, to get rid of them. There's hawks out there. There's cats in the neighborhood. I have dogs, my neighbors have dogs. I was a veterinary nurse for 20 years. I saw what rat poison does to animals and it terrifies me, it's horrible. So I was really just trying to find a safe way of getting rid of them, but one of my neighbors took care of that for me. So I think the rats are under control and now I have a new way of feeding them, an idea of how to feed them a uh, different way, but um, so I'm the troublemaker. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Ms. Young, can we just get your address for the record? Oh, sorry, 286 Nemeral. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. we appreciate it. And thank you for commenting. Yes, sir. Come on up. Hey, Good, how are you? My, all right, my name is Bill Bitters. I live at 681 Mason Drive, right here yes, in Harvester. Karen's a friend of mine. What can I say? I mean, she gets, I get eggs from her. She takes care of the property and whatnot, and mm -hmm. she's trying to do a good thing. And along with everybody else in Warminster Township, I think, you know, saying 10 acres is quite a bit, yeah. and it is a lot, you know, especially around here. But, uh, yeah, if you guys get the ordinance passed through, I'd like to get them too. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> That's about it. I hope you guys find in, you know, fair for everybody around here that likes the chickens. So, right. but thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank yep. you. Appreciate it. All right. Any other chicken, chicken comments going once? Nice. All right. All right. Well, I, I thank everybody for the uh, feedback on, on, on chickens. Uh, we are going to be uh, working on this. Uh, if you have questions, I, I do invite you to, uh, keep in contact. The meeting is one way to do it, but you could also email 
the township. You can also reach out, and we can keep up to contact to contact that way. I know it's a lot to ask people to come to meetings all the time. There's a lot you can be doing with your time other than listening to us talk. So uh, please make sure to stay engaged. We'll do our best to stay engaged with you. And uh, of course, you can find most of us online if you ever need anything. So thank you on the chickens. Thank you. Uh, thank thank you. you. All right, moving on to the rest of our public comment. Yes, ma'am, come on up. LLM, <clears throat> excuse me, LM. Good morning, okay. good afternoon, good evening. Wow, <laughs> it's been a long day. Okay, on March the 2nd, 2017, when the legal agreement between Wawa and Warminster was approved, the neighbors believed that the concerns about Wawa's lack of compliance was over. Sadly, they were wrong. The current violation is a 16-foot height bar, a height bar almost eight feet higher than what is allowed under the legal agreement. A height bar built with no plans, no permits, and no inspections. We all know what would happen if a resident complied, complained about a neighbor putting up an eight or a 10 foot fence without plans, permits, or zoning approval. That fence would be history in no time. There is quite a double standard. Whatever, whenever I hear about the Wawa height bar situation, I hear the word safety. If safety is important as claimed, do you know if that height bar was installed correctly with the correct materials? Does anyone have an answer to that? This is public comment, so you can, okay. you can add. Yeah. If you are as concerned about safety as you want to believe, why hasn't the bar been removed? Does it really take five months to get an illegally built structure removed in the township? If the answer is yes, it is a very sad state of affairs. And concerning the safety of these height bars, these are the only ones in the township or any other township around us that I know that seem to have a problem. Why is that? How about larger and better placed warning signs? Signs that say stop, eight foot two foot clearance or some lighting, blinking on the height bar to warn truckers and people with vehicles over eight foot two. With the warmer weather, it's time that you start to think of the safety of all the neighborhood children who ride their bikes and people who walk along that driveway among the vehicles. Large trucks and vehicles traveling through there is truly a big safety problem. If Warminster Township and Wawa did not think it was safe, why did both parties agree with the stipulation and the court order? I feel that the only safe, safety concern of Wawa is for their pocketbook by not, ha by not having to pay for repairs to the damaged tithe bars and the convenience for their trucks and other vehicles over eight foot two to use that road. Does any, uh, also do you have any updates that you'd like to share with us about Wawa? Uh, when we reported last on April 18th, 2019, we advised that uh, Wawa was in the process of obtaining legal counsel to deal with the township and to deal with this issue. Uh, they have engaged a local counsel. Um, we have had an opportunity to speak with them generally as to concerns that have been voiced by people such as yourself as well as the township. Uh, they are in the process of reviewing um, some alternatives relative to uh, how the traffic will be handled on the site. And they're dealing with their traffic engineer to put together those alternatives and the associated proposals and the site plan to show how things could be changed. And we anticipate having a meeting in June after that is completed. So I, it, is, it is my goal, my objective, uh, that on uh, the board's uh, June 20th meeting, I will be able to present a more substantive report. Now there's a couple of things that I can't control, namely when they're going to get us those proposals and when we can actually schedule a meeting during the summer months, but that is the goal. Yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> that is the goal. Okay. How about the, uh, getting the tall 16 foot lowered to at least 10? 10 foot like it was before well, we're not interested in doing piecemeal with this the 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 um what what the what the board has advised our office and staff to do is to address this issue holistically so we're measuring twice and cutting once we're not going to do a patchwork uh type resolution on this so, so uh, give us the opportunity to to meet with wawa and to see what their options are and then then we will brief the board accordingly likely on the 20th of june I just okay. want to, real quick, didn't we mention at the last meeting that yeah. we, we gave them like 30 days and if mm -hmm. they weren't in compliance that we would start issuing citations? Didn't we say that at the last meeting? I know that yes, was discussed. 
I, I don't believe that there was any direction on that. And I also think that we thought better of it given the fact that we are scheduling the meeting okay. and to have a, a fruitful conversation, you don't want to have certain enforcement hanging over their head. Now, if that meeting doesn't come about or if the, me if the meeting proves fruitless, then that's something that the board could, could entertain. But um, in an effort to, to put the most earnest and, and uh, fruitful type of meeting with Wawa, I would like to see us do that prior to any type of enforcement. Now, my question because is... Because by the time it gets passed through the system, I I'm going to be meeting with these guys with staff, you know, before it's even scheduled up before the DJ. I understand. I mean, I, I just got to, I got to, I just got to say that it, it's one of the things, ever since I became a supervisor here in Warminster Township, we always put enforcement secondary uh, to those negotiations. It's not just this, it's it's an ongoing thing that predates you, it's not you. Sure, no, no problem. Um, but I mean, that's I mean that's one thing that I, I, I mean, I think that we should enforce our ordinances and then negotiate. I mean, I think that helps get them to the table, get them moving, get them interested in being compliant or at least getting some sort of negotiated deal done. I, I think that we should start enforcing our ordinances. Basically, what are we te teaching our children? We're teaching them to disregard the law because they, they learn that people, businesses don't have to obey the law, so therefore, why should they? And then it teaches an example, um, like the high force, ignore them, hit them with your vehicle, knock them down, do what you want, and then uh, say, threaten to take legal action against the township, and then they say, oh, well, what do you want? And then you get your way. And I well, don't that, think that's, that that's, appears that's to be what the township. That's where I'm going to stop you briefly. I mean, I, I, I've kind of given you the outline of what we've done since the 18th of April, where we're headed. Right. But you um, had also implied the next, that this month, bef the last month before you applied, you'd have information I last just, month. And I just gave it to you. No, I just last gave month. You. Then you did. Pri so, no, no. But so then you, you said this month, but you also had said, you had said about enforcing the compliance, because I listened to the tapes before I came. So, and now they've got another month that Wawa does this. Now I have a question though. I, they, gonna... they came out and took the, on the one by the bank, they took that down, the height bar, cross bar. Why, if they can do one, why can't they do the other? I can't speak to that. I don't, I, I don't know if that is accurate. Do they take down a bar? Well, it is down, but uh, the thing is the 16, that's Ill, the illegal one yeah. is still standing. They took the, Legal we'll, one down. We'll, we'll review that, but again, just to reiterate, when when you came in April, we noted that there would be certain actions taken. Those actions have been taken. We were These hearing in March. No, no, I'm I'm talking about when I reported on on the 18th of April, and then till tonight. Wawa has engaged local council. There, you know, I have seen no indication that these guys are sitting on their hands. I've seen a, that they're they're willing to be pragmatic and result oriented with us to resolve this issue. But they take time. Things take time. <laughs> And, and we know and, Wawa. Well, and and that's and that's fine. But uh, again, there's two parties to that stipulation. That term of that stipulation was made a court approved court order is either going to be complied with or they're going to present a compelling basis with which for us to get into that stipulation and have it amended by a judge to to alleviate the township's concerns. Those are really the two options door number one or door number two. And hopefully I'll have something more substantive to report come the June meeting in uh, on the 20th. Okay, may I ask, tell you, to, I know Jason said that we should be kept updated on different things at times. I don't mean every phone call, I don't mean it that way, right. but we've never heard one word since you said those words. We just so, got the update. I mean, it's- Nobody it's, has ever updated us on anything. So uh, the only way we do no, is get I, to I, come here. I don't, want to put, I don't want to put words in the chairman's mouth, but that's the point of coming to a meeting, to be informed. If you're well, he had for said for Amanda courier. to update us on things. But I, that's okay if yeah. you don't want to. We'll come. No, I mean well, you're always Just welcome, so. Alan. You're you're always welcome at the meeting. I I I when I said that I was meaning substance and updates beyond like they've retained legal counsel, local legal counsel. I know doesn't probably resonate a lot with you. It resonates a lot with us because the counsel they've retained, we've worked with multiple right. times. We believe that a solution's on the horizon because we're not dealing with some corporate lawyer from 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 you know Delaware County or Chester County we're dealing with a guy we've dealt with a hundred times before so but I did not think that rose to that level so I apologize is that Mr. Hecker what, no it's not Mr. Hecker okay that's who was doing before it's uh the one of the one of the one of the attorneys is Mr. Ed Murphy that's, that's okay yeah so I I I did not give clear direction to the administration so I would I would ask that you not blame them for not updating you on I'm that. sorry so, then I'm I just yeah. with what you no, said no no it's it's fair it's a fair comment 
It's a fair comment. Because of the way I said it, I wasn't clear to them on it. And so I would, I'll ask them when there's a substantive uh, update, if there's a hiring or something comes out of a meeting to please let LM know. Well, can I ask a question? Sure. Could you make it clear to us, what is really the township? What are you people's concern about Wawa and that in regard to the stipulation? I don't, I don't believe that there's any concern relative to the stipulation. The question is is, is, is there a safety concern out in the field? And if there is, how's it going to be resolved? All that stuff is under, is, is under our review right now. And again, we'll, we'll report substantively at, at an upcoming meeting, hopefully in June. Now, the safety, can, you mean about cars hitting that bar if eight foot two? There, there's, been, there's been reports that that, that does happen. Right, but, but then there's signs saying it and the people that are driving the vehicles are not obeying the law. So think about that too, because everything can become a problem if you want it to become a problem. And if it's a problem, the other height bars in the township which are even lower don't get damaged, so it's only that one. And I had a report, there was a lady here at the other meeting and said that um, she had heard, now I'm only repeating what she heard, mm -hmm. I don't have proof. But people have put things on top of their trucks to hit it to make damage so the township would get them down. Now, I don't know true or not true. Yeah. I had no idea. Well, but I know for a year we had no problems at all. Right. And then all of a sudden there's been a rash right. since November, which is kind of odd. Right. I understand. I, okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Alan. you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment this evening? All right. Seeing none, we're going to move on. To the uh, to the consent agenda, uh, I'm going to shoot that over to Mr. Schuster. Mr. Schuster, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tonight's consent agenda is as follows: Item A is approval of your minutes from your April 18th, 2019 meeting. Item B is approval of proclamations uh, recognizing Chamber of Commerce scholarship recipients, uh, who I believe was issued this uh, this afternoon. Item C is approval of the Memorial Day, uh, sorry, Memorial Day Parade Proclamation. Item D is approval of the conditional use orders for AT&T. You'll know there are two orders on there, uh, one for 885 Old York Road and one for 510 East Street Road. This is the hearing that you had uh, at your last meeting uh, as written up uh, by the solicitor. Item E is 1270 Mearns Road, release number one from the escrow account in the amount of $43,301.25. And item F is release of the station at Bucks County East land development 18th month security, maintenance security in the amount of $306,656.63. Thank you, Mr. Schuster. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Um, any uh, discussion on the consent agenda? No? I just have one question. Go for it. On the AT&T uh, conditional use, is there any changes to what we heard originally, um, Mr. Ionozzi? Are there any changes in terms of, of what the, uh, the proposal? Right. The proposal. No, the proposal stays the same, and, and the decision is subject to certain conditions, one of which is that uh, the use and improvement of that property has testified to and, and depicted in their exhibits at the last hearing. Uh, they are uh, confined to that uh, substantially. So uh, that's the first one. The second thing is the board wanted to, to make clear that those poles, those replacement poles, would not have any other installations on them whatsoever. That's done. And then complying with um, uh, the zoning officer's April 8th correspondence, setting forth you know certain things that they had to follow. And lastly is the requirement that the install uh, of both the pole, the antenna, and the equipment has to be done uh, to the satisfaction and the written certification of our township engineer in terms of structural integrity and safety. Thank you. I, I wanted to just inform the residents because I know there was some concern. I had concerns myself, and I'm glad we take the, we took these extra steps for the safety of our residents. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Is there any uh, uh, comment or questions from the public on the consent agenda? No. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. No. Chair votes aye. Carries 5-0. Okay. All right. I will now turn it over to our treasurer, Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to put forth a motion to approve all transfers and bill list for period ended May 16, 2019, including April transfers, supplemental bill list dated April 30, 2019, in the amount of 
$588.78, and bill list dated May 16, 2019, in the amount of $1,373,557.47. Thank you. Can we have a second? Second. Any questions? No? All right. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye, passes 5 0. Okay, uh, Mr. Schuster, the uh, April financial statement, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We are still tracking uh, pretty much to, to budget with some uh, minor variations here and there that you can see in the report. Of course, they say every month just because we're tracking to budget, uh, that's still something to be concerned about as there is a significant deficit that is built into, uh, into the budget for 2019. But as of now, we are still tracking to budget. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Schuster? Uh, just, just a comment. I mean, we're tracking and tracking and to a huge deficit that will basically eat up just about all of our fund balance. We should take the summer to really start working on what we're going to have to do here in the fall. I mean, we're going into summer months. Things are going to be slow. People are on vacation. But come September, we're going to have some real decisions to make here because we, by end, year's end, we're going to be broke. And I know we're, we're doing some assessment, asset, asset evaluation, and things like that, but we're going to need to talk over the summer about Come September, we're going to have to hit the ground running here with with what we're what we're going to have to do here to keep the township solvent. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. I think about it every day. I know I talk to you about it every day. As you stated, we are going through the process of uh, the asset valuation. Uh, additionally, in the next week or two, uh, internally staff is having our first meeting on the 2020 budget. So we're already beginning that process. So. Uh, hopefully, everything as, as we get into the summer, uh, you'll have a lot more clarity and, and the decisions that have to be made. Right. Thank, thank you. I'm sorry to hear that it's trending. I wish revenues were way up. <laughs> now, revenues are pretty much uh, what we expected. I mean, we'll uh, we'll see what happens uh, over the next uh, few months with building permits. That's always uh, uh, an X factor. But most of our revenue sources uh, are rel relatively stable, even if uh, building permits uh, do t uh, trend higher the higher uh, than, than the budget. Um, it's not going to save us. Right. Uh, there's really nothing out there that I see that could that could save us or, or make up that deficit. All right. All right, any other comments? No? All right. Uh, we have no unfinished business e this evening. Uh, for new business, uh, there's uh, considering a ratification of agreement between Warminster Township and the AFSCME District Council 88, Local 1598. Uh, Mr. Schuster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did brief the board in executive session about the proposed agreement. Uh, it is a four-year uh, agreement, the terms of which uh, have been uh, outlined to you in executive session. Uh, I now present it to you for your ratification uh, with my recommendation. Okay. Could I get a motion uh, uh, to approve the uh, agreement? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Any comment from the board? Just that question, Mr. Schuster. This this collective bargaining agreement is available for public review. Of course, it's uh, once you've approved it and it's it's a public document. Then I say I suggest the public should review our collective bargaining agreements because it all plays into what we're facing in the fall here. Yep. Uh, and I think the public should review our collective bargaining agreements with our employees. Yep. I just want to thank Mr. Schuster for a job well done. Thank you, and I'd be remiss if I didn't thank the union also for working with us. Uh, uh, negotiations can be contentious at times, um, but uh, at the end of the day, I think we uh, reached a fair deal and uh, enjoyed working uh, with, uh, with the Public Works Union on, on getting this, uh, this agreement done. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Any comment or questions from the public? All right. Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Carries 5-0. All right, moving right along, professional reports. Mr. Schuster, Township Manager's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have my written report in case there's any questions. Uh, you already know about the Memorial Day Parade coming up, so we invite the community out uh, to uh, both the ceremony and the parade. You can find details on the Township website. Uh, likewise, you can find additional details on the website about Warminster Day, which is June 8th. We're looking uh, forward to that. Uh, we also want to thank all of our sponsors, especially the Cowie family, uh, for everything that they've done. Uh, everyone in certain areas of time ha have noticed that the road program has begun. Uh, milling started uh, last week. Uh, paving was delayed until yesterday. Uh, we anticipate four to six more weeks of, of paving, but of course that is heavily dependent upon the weather. So if uh, rain comes back in, that'll delay everything. And the last thing I wanted to report out to the board is um, I think some of you are aware that uh, a number of months ago, uh, 
we discovered that there was a leak in the water line at Shenandoah Woods. Um, the Navy uh, decided to shut off uh, the water there uh, over the uh, protests of our fire marshal, uh, which of course meant that all the hydrants on Shenandoah Woods uh, were, were not operable. Uh, not just, uh, just a few weeks after that is when they had the fire there, um, destroyed I believe two or three units. Uh, I want to thank all the fire companies that had to come out. It was a larger event than you would typically uh, have uh, for a fire of that nature because you had to bring in tankers, uh, which you typically don't see tankers in Warminster because there's fire hydrants uh, everywhere. But when you have the need for tankers, you have to bring in quite a few of them, uh, set up your drop tanks, and then do a whole uh, operation to shuttle the, the water. Uh, subsequent to that event, I did send a letter to the Navy, which I uh, included in a, uh, a packet to, uh, to you, uh, where I requested that the Navy uh, do repair and activate those water lines. Uh, we have a strong concern that if uh, the fire does break out, uh, which it has been in the past, it could be a significant amount of time before someone actually realizes it, as there's no residence there, and it could spread uh, very quickly. Uh, just yesterday, I did receive the response from the Navy. Uh, they are saying that they will not uh, turn the water uh, back on. So I just want to make the board aware of this. I do consider this a, a danger to the community. Uh, it is something that uh, we're very concerned about, that uh, if another fire were to start there, that it could spread rapidly and, and, and uh, endanger other, uh, other areas. Um, the, there is a, quite a bit of trespassing on there, so it's not you know, it's not unheard of that someone can go in there and, and start a fire. Uh, we do plan on uh, notifying our federal representatives and asking for them to intervene. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure you and the public was aware uh, of this inaction by the Navy and the danger that it does pro uh, pose to the community. Did, did we send them a bill for the uh, tanker and the firefighter fire? No, we didn't. should. I know that our board safety is like number one of our number one concerns for our residents. Mr. Ionosi, is there anything we can do legally about the situation? Uh, when me and the township manager spoke about this, I think candidly we should just have an open conversation to the extent that we can try to show them the wisdom of reconnecting that. We can't force them to do that. Mm -hmm. but, I, but I would like to, us to engage in that conversation for obvious reasons. Right, if we could twist their arm a little bit, that'd be great. I would also like to see to what extent we can get certain recoupment. If, if their insurance company paid out, we're entitled to, to, to get certain recoupment for, for the fire services provided. If you'd like our office to explore that, we could do that as well. Okay, thank you. I find it ironic that the entity that is responsible for our water rates doubling cut off the water so they wouldn't have to pay the water rates. Right. right. So um, I would send them the bill for the tankers and I'd send them a bill for how many wells do we have? 26? I believe 26, yes. 26, well, so that's 26 million, a million dollars for each one. Uh, that might solve our pension issue right there. But uh, I, I, I encourage Mr. Schuster, Mr. Inozzi, and all the board members to uh, also please share this story with, with everyone you can because it is utter BS that, that, you know, it's a simple request. If that place was to catch on fire and burn, that presents a significant hazard to the adjacent homes, the wildlife, in our park so not to mention if there's teenagers hanging out or whoever somebody can out. get hurt and uh, that's the God number forbid. one thing right. somebody gets hurt and all so the, the federal government can save a few bucks on the water they contaminated so all right sorry for the soapbox any other no nope. no nope. any questions for mr okay. schuster yep. all right we're going to move on to our solicitor's report mr i thank you mr chairman our may report was included in your packets uh, setting forth uh, the current status of our 2019 trash and light collections. Uh, if you look at your subdivision and the land development section, you'll see that uh, our office in concert with township staff uh, is moving quite a bit of paper and there's a lot of development underway. And the remainder of the report uh, speaks for itself relative to uh, zoning and our point of litigation that's been ongoing. Shenandoah Woods. Any questions for Mr. Anandzi? Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Last but certainly not least. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, you have our uh, May engineer's report. Uh, one comment or um, item for your June meeting uh, with hopefully um, we'll 
be success at Planning Commission will be the 911 York Road uh, Retirement Village Community that's Caddis Development. Mm -hmm. uh, we did receive the revised plans. We had quite a bit of dialogue over the last month or so with the engineer and applicant. Um, they are scheduled to go to the June was eleventh, June eleventh, Planning Commission, and then uh, proceed to your your board meeting twentieth. Um, so. Um, Based on what I've seen so far, we just received the plans, and again, the cooperation we had, uh, I think you'll, uh, they'll be in a good position for, for approval. Um, uh, I did find out uh, that um, they rushed their submission. Uh, they tried to hit some deadlines. CADIS was pushing, a lot of changes, a lot of coordination between CADIS and then uh, you know, county builders. Uh, so the plans were not complete even as submitted. So that did come out later <laughs> at the engineers meeting. So that was the result of why there's a lengthy review. Uh, the other project that, a uh, large project that we thought would be coming back in and, and trending along at the same time as far as approval is Lidl Grocery Store. They have not, um, they have not been cooperative with us, their engineer. Uh, they have not even resubmitted the plan since our review of a month and a half ago. So I'm not sure if Lidl's in any hurry again, which I think is that's what staff's hearing, but um, I've not even received the plan, so. That sounds like they might be getting cold feet. Yeah, I mean, Judy and your planner and I talked quite a bit. I mean, none of the issues were substantial. It was just a lot of, you know, they were putting a lot on, on the property now, and they wanted to develop the rest of it. So they kind of just said, ah, we'll just put it in here without any good planning and, and uh, forward thinking. So they're mostly technical in nature. I don't think there's, you know, they might need some more waivers, but um, I don't understand. And they're just not, there's not communication going on. So, um <clears throat> I know that as a company itself, it seems to have struggled with its launch in the United States on the sizes of buildings and such. So, I think you're fully aware in the audience. Staff, we're very cooperative. A staff yeah, level, yeah. my staff, um, if they don't want to sit down and work things out, um, we have plenty of staff meetings, plenty of right. engineer meetings. So, yeah, um, Mr. Mayor, is this water. typical of, of legal and <coughs> other other uh, townships where they have? Have uh, businesses? Should they don't have too many. Like I mean, I think I think uh, Judy heard uh, your township planner that they're just picking and choosing where they want to push their their new stores and they're having trouble getting started. I don't yeah. know if Amanda or Greg have any other update, but I don't think this is the focal point to get this store up and running. Okay. Yeah. Well, my, my other question, of course, is uh, we lost the the Acme on the far end at, down at Davisville. Right. Now they moved the giant that was up in uh, Jameson. That's gone yeah. now. Um, any word from Weiss Market? Anything? I mean, now it, it should be more... Uh, no, no, not all. We're done on our end. They're, they're, <laughs> they're ready to go. I just need uh, start, they need to start construction. Uh, we we uh, presented a land development document that they were reviewing. There were certain uh, changes that they wanted to make we negotiated those and discussed those in keeping with what we've done consistently in the past and the balls in their court so there has been was that recently uh, I'd say in the last three months all right so they're still interested yes I, oh. I, I've also reviewed their bond which would be the security bond that they would be submitting with the with the application um, when they go forward and uh, found that in keeping we had some changes to make but we did that so I get the impression they're moving albeit at a very Slow pace. Hey, Mark, we never got that coming soon sign that, no. you, that you wanted. No, no. <laughs> you got to put that in there. Got, I'm sure. I'm sure our friend Joe Cowie from Shoprite's glad that they're all taking their You're time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Good for Joe. Uh, so that that's all I have. Any other questions for Mr. Kendrick? Mm -hmm. Thank all you. Right. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. By the uh, way, Mr. Kendrick, I know you mentioned earlier the Shoprite's a big sponsor for Warminster Day. So is Gilmore. Thank, thank you. Thank you for Gilmore. Thank you. Yes. All right, Township Manager announcement of upcoming agenda items, Mr. Schuster. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If there is no objection, we will cancel the June 6th meeting. No objection. Uh, Mr. Kennard already said, uh, we talked about 911 York Road, which should be on the, uh, the agenda. Uh, we do have a number of presentations. Uh, the long-awaited Warminster Community Park presentation, uh, although we still have not heard back from the state, uh, we've made the decision to go forward. We, we think we will hear back from the state uh, by that meeting, but regardless, we have to move forward and right. get it before you. If there's something that comes out that changes it, we'll, of course, come back before you and discuss those changes, but right. uh, we want to move this forward. Uh, also, the auditors will be here. Uh, 
the 2018 audit is being finished right now. Uh, we anticipate that being released before the end of the month uh, and distributed to you and the public. Uh, and after that, I'd like to make the, uh, the auditors available to both you and the public at a meeting in case any of you have any questions on the finances. And lastly, uh, the fire study, which has been uh, ongoing, uh, we anticipate that report being uh, sent out and then making their final presentation uh, to the board on their findings. At your meeting? At the June meeting. Okay. And when do we go to the relaxed look? I forget. June. The June? What's that? This is my relaxed look. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, yes, we will go to uh, what we like now. to call the uh, Frank Bartle look. The Frank Bartle. For the gentleman. Uh, for, uh, Mr. Ionosi didn't hear you. That's uh, all right. <laughs> I, I pulled it off last month with the vest and no tie. So, uh, we will be uh, business casual for the summer months. And when we come back after Labor Day, we'll return to uh, business dress. Sound good? Well, and Mr. Eyes knows he can dress however he wants, as long as he takes care of the law stuff. I'm cool. Right. Amen. There you go. Free, Sounds like a deal. <laughs> yeah. And you can do whatever you want to, Mrs. Okay, Frescator. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right. So um, any questions on the upcoming agenda items? All right. We are now on the second round of public comment. This time you can comment on any item. Do we have any public comment here in the second round? Come on down. Hello, everybody. Bob Welsh, Hollowell Avenue, Warmester. I just wanted to say I was at a luncheon today for the Chamber of Commerce, and I was happy to see that Warmester recognized students from around the local schools, uh, especially the student was recognized for going to a trade school. Now, I know we need our doctors and our attorneys and our engineers and our accountants, but we desperately need our plumbers, our electricians, our carpenters. Our drywall finishers. Drywall finishers. Uh, yeah. And yes. also our auto techs. Now, back in the day, I used to be able to work on my cars. I don't know about you guys, but you lift up the hood of your car, there's no way you can fix that car. So I'm really, really pleasantly pleased that warmers to recognize that we need students to apply and go to trade schools. We definitely need skilled labor in our workforce. And I was happy to see that recognized today. Uh, one other thing, there used to be a welcome to warmers there sign at uh, Bristol and Davisville Road. I think it got taken out by a vehicle. I uh, just want to know if we're going to have that reinstalled. It, it's nice to let people know that they're entering Warmerster. All right. We'll take a look. Yeah. Well, obviously, would, the yeah. citizens are still welcome here. And, uh, oh, absolutely. I, I don't know but what happened nice. to that sign, but we'll, we'll figure it There's out. There's a lot of attractive signs around the township welcoming <laughs> people to Warmerster, and that was one. I just wanted to see if we were getting I'm sorry, that you said Bristol and, Bristol and Davisville. Bristol and Davisville. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Welsh. Yeah, the, uh, the encouragement of the trades, I don't know if anybody's ever watched uh, that TV show, Dirty Jobs. Uh, Mike Rowe, who, who's, who you might think is a tradesman, but he does the voiceover for like Deadliest Catch and he's on Discovery all the time. He started a whole foundation called, uh, I think it's Mike Rowe uh, Works, which is, uh, raises money to, uh, to fund uh, people to go back to school to do trade trade so they go to be metal workers or they can go to be uh, drywall finishers whatever whatever we need so that's that's great that we recognize them is there any other public comment this evening all right seeing none we're now moving on to supervisor's comment and I'd like to lead off with mr. Monroe all right thank you mr. chair um, forgot to mention earlier about the Civil War reenactment. Uh, I know, Mr. Schuster, you were there. I saw some videos that were posted by you. I actually went later because um, I really wanted to talk to a lot of the, uh, the people that were involved, um, why they were a little bit more relaxed. They, were, they had their campsites all set up, so I went out there at, at dusk. And uh, my number one thing was I wanted to see what they thought because, you know, before they used to be up in the Chamonix. Um, and, you know, when people think, you know, Warminster Community Park, they don't realize how expansive and what did the park really is and uh and they were all thrilled um at least every person that i spoke to um i got there it was right before because if you remember sunday rolled in and it just it drenched everything 
Um, I, I heard that Saturday was a, a pretty big success. Um, I wasn't there, but that was from the word of mouth is from what I heard. And, uh, and I can tell you that every person I, I spoke to were very much looking forward to coming back and making this an annual event. Uh, the one thing that I think that they mentioned was maybe they might not uh, pick uh, May because I guess there's a lot of competition uh, with respect to reenactments along the East Coast around that time. So they, they're thinking maybe uh, early fall when it's still warm out. Um, I'm just glad that they're interested to come back. I think it's great for our community. I think it's great uh, for the community park. And I don't remember exactly what it was, but there was actually, they, they, they were talking about some historical uh, 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 issues that occurred here in Warminster with respect to the Civil War. Um, I don't remember what it was, uh, but I thought that was interesting that they were able to tie that in. Um, and by the way, they were great with, with, with kids. I mean, I brought my 8-year-old and my 11-year-old, and they just bent over backwards to you know, show their outfits and talk about why they wore the different statuses of, of the classes, you know, depending on, and I never would have told, been able to tell, but like, you know, uh, the different outfits that they wore, like, you know, somebody of a, of a more rich status would be wearing some, one thing, and, you know, I thought that was fascinating, and so did my daughter, by the way. So uh, that is all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ms. Frescator. Yes, um, we'd like to thank uh, our professionals and my fellow supervisors for a great collaborative meeting. I'd like to thank the residents that show up. Uh, this is the forum to be heard if you have uh, something to say and we will listen. So I want to thank you for taking an interest in your township. It means a lot. And that's it, Mr. Chair. Mr. Thank Mr. you. Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I would look forward to Sunday to seeing everyone at the Rubber Ducky Regatta. I've uh, volunteered my lovely wife to go into water after the ducks. You're, you're welcome. Uh, and also I want to wish everyone a real happy uh, Memorial Day. Hope to see everyone here for the ceremony and, and we'll have some fun at the parade in the VFW afterwards. So I have. Thank you, Mr. McKee. Mr. McPhillips. Yeah, I'll piggyback off of Mark. Yeah, and wish everyone a happy Memorial Day and encourage you to come out to the parade. Um, it's a really good time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. McPhillips. I want to first thank all the residents that came out, uh, Chicken Coalition included. <laughs> uh, it, look, you never know in this line of work what's going to be the hot button issue of the day. I'm glad that we had the dialogue this evening. And I would be remiss not to mention that there were a number of people who I spoke to online who had a different feeling about chicken. So everybody, whether they come to the meeting, which is a great way to make your voice heard, or reach out to us online or via email, uh, all of our information's out there. We can, we can all be reached. Uh, please continue to, to participate. Uh, really, uh, left to my own devices, I don't know if I would have known about how the chicken feed works with them standing up. Like, I still don't understand that, but at least I know about it now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I also want to encourage everybody uh, that before we get to Memorial Day and after the Rubber Ducky Regatta, on Tuesday, May 21st is primary day. Uh, there will be a primary election. Uh, polling places, I believe there are no changes to polling places, is that correct this year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our polling places are the same they were in November. Uh, I encourage everybody to come out. People might say, oh, it's a primary. Uh, it's, uh, it's very important that you come out and voice. There are uh, uh, positions on the ballot where they can be decided in this primary election, and it's very important to, to, to come out. Uh, it, the races this year not only include judges, but uh, our county races and local races, including this board and the school board. So uh, please come out. Uh, please vote. Uh, you might see some names you recognize on there. So. Uh, Please, uh, if you have any questions, you can go on to uh, www, uh, I believe it is, PA Votes, if you uh, are not sure of your polling place, or you can call the township. Mr. Schuster will gladly tell you where to vote. <laughs> so, see. Or, or, or direct you to the county. But there either way, we'll get you the information. Okay. Yep. So, I was just making sure he's still awake. Any, uh, before we call for adjournment, any other news for the good of the order? Nope. All right, could I get a motion to adjourn? So moved. We are out. Thank you. Thank you.